Hey, a little delayed, but it's Monday, and we are going to wrap up the 2016 Colts season on a season finale edition of Horseplay. My name is Dave First, the legendary Michael <laughs> Grady. Stop, stop. How many jobs did you have over the last <laughs> couple of days? We had a, well, we had a Pacers game, IU game, Pacers game, then radio show. Radio show. Then stakeout. Then our little dog and pony <laughs> shit. We're staking out <laughs> Stake the Colts out. complex, and now we're on horseplay. I'm still waiting. Uh, what's it like, by the way? In case you missed it, it was the Countdown Classic at Bankers Life Fieldhouse on Saturday afternoon, mm -hmm. Indiana and Louisville, and Louisville kicked the snot out of IU. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to play a very neutral role, even though the place is like what eighty yeah. percent IU fans. That's right. Because the two schools are, are uh, it's, split the gate, it's basically. Basically, a neutral. It's, it's supposed to be a it's neutral. It's a neutral site game. Okay. It's the countdown classic on New Year's Eve. Right. But again, eighty. Yeah, eighty percent. Who's your fan? Eighty percent. Who's your fan? But it's not like you, it's not like a Patriots game where you can, you know, oh, yeah, I can't you can hype up by you, <laughs> and then. And Louisville coach Rick Pitino. <laughs> Honest, my mood. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked to have done that. Yes. Uh, and A lot of fans and, would have liked to have heard that. <laughs> yes, exactly. But, anyway. uh, but no, technically neutral site. So. Neutral site. <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, we alluded to it earlier. It was a stakeout at the Colts Complex. It was basically Groundhog Day from exactly a year ago yep. Yep. Uh, when we kind of staked it out a year ago. I'm sorry. I need to turn down the iPad. <laughs> and we all thought something was going to happen. They said, uh, everybody go home, nothing's going to happen tonight, come back tomorrow. Then we got a phone call at like 9 o'clock at yeah. night saying, no, 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 come on back. <laughs> and we found out that uh, both Chuck Pagano and Ryan Grigson, not only were they coming back, they got contract extensions yeah. up until 2019. So we're out there again today thinking something's got to happen. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and those Nothing that are happened. watching, I mean, you can, under, you can understand why. A year ago, uh, we thought that there would be some furniture moving on West 56th Street, but Pagano was able to sell himself. Hey, look, we're a year removed from an AFC championship game, and we didn't have Andrew Luck the final nine games of the season. Sold himself well, got that contract extension, got himself tied at the hip with general manager Ryan Grigson. This year, you had the quarterback all but one game this season, and you finish 8-8, eight and eight, and you needed a come-from-behind victory in the fourth quarter against a three-win Jacksonville Jaguars team just to reach 500. And so <laughs> you, you have a franchise quarterback in, in Andrew Luck, and let's not make no mistake about it, it's hard to get fired when you're in a division as bad as the AFC South and you have a quarterback like Andrew Luck. Uh, but Pagano and company certainly putting themselves in that position. So he's got, I'm sure he has to do a sell job again to Jim Say, and we'll see what happens. No announcement just yet. Seems odd that there was a press conference today. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's still, so we're playing the waiting game. The press conference was odd uh, because word came out, I want to say it was about 11 a.m. this morning, mm -hmm. that uh, Chuck Pagano was going to talk at 1.30. And I saw that and I thought, boy, that would, there's no way that the franchise would throw Chuck out there without knowing that he's going to come back. I've never seen a news conference no. where, hey, let's put Chuck out there for the season-ending news conference, and then we're going to fire him about three or four, years, <laughs> or four hours later. I've never seen that happen. And so Chuck gets out there, and even the news conference was bizarre because he goes into this 11-minute diatribe yep. about, you know, we've got the right people in place. And I'm, I don't know about you, and I'm thinking... Either A, he's going to say he's resigning. Right, right. Surprise. Yeah, waiting. Yeah. Or he's sticking around. And sure enough, then we got to the questions about what's your future, what's going on. It was almost as if he was surprised we would even ask that question. Yeah, it's, it's, well, he, he doesn't want to entertain that question at all. And at yesterday's right. press conference, of course, when asked about his future, he went in a completely different direction, talked about his family. Thanks, everybody, for coming and exited stage left. Right. And then today he starts off, as you mentioned, an 11-minute filibuster, if you will, before the hard questions started to come in about whether or not he's talked to Jim Mercer, what does he know about his future, what has he told his players. And so it took a while to get to that point. He was taking uh, some big gulps of Dasani when those questions were coming in, and um, and then it ended kind of awkwardly as well. So again, it's the waiting game. It was just a bizarre, bizarre turn of events today. The uh, someone chimed in. What's the point of this? Hey, it's Facebook Live. We want to get your thoughts about what's going on. Oh, I'm uh, sure he means the press conference with the team. 
and then yeah <laughs> we were all asking the same thing too like at one point i i like like five minutes into the his diatribe and i tweeted out uh, due to due to time constraints let's move ahead in our coverage with it <laughs> uh but anyway let's uh play a taste while we read your thoughts here on what should happen with the cold let's get a little taste of chuck pagano this afternoon our goal uh has always been uh to win a championship and that's not going to happen uh we understand um that you know eight and eight is uh not good enough and that's that's on me it's unacceptable and uh it's a winning culture uh it's a winning organization and uh and we didn't achieve uh the goal and we all know that uh players and the coaches and myself we all we all know that and we know what the expectations are and you know i i know we've got the right staff i know we got the right guys in the locker room i told those guys today you know um this team won't won't be the same it's the harsh reality of the national football league yeah it's gonna be changes and speaking of which around the national football league already six changes and you're not offended michael if we leave the question mark by yeah. <laughs> no we don't know we don't know. We know about these others, though. Uh, unfortunate health situation with Gary Kubiak has forced him to uh, step down there with the yeah. Denver Broncos a year after winning the Super Bowl. Chip Kelly, Gone. no surprise there. Jeff Fisher, happened a couple weeks ago. Gus Bradley, uh, after that loss to the Houston Texans. Rex Ryan gone, Mike McCoy. And so there are a lot of openings. And if, he, if you want to jump into this mix, you need to get there as soon as possible because some of the, the, the hottest candidates, if you will, I, I don't know that there are a whole lot of sexy names out there, but the hottest candidates are going to be scooped up by these teams that yeah. already have a head start on you. Yeah, and I've heard a lot of the, the Rams uh, personnel. They've already reached out to a lot of folks, uh, as have Jacksonville. Of course, Jacksonville right. let go Gus Bradley a couple of weeks ago now. Uh -huh. uh, so they're already out there. I don't, uh, who, who is the hot guy right now? And maybe there that's why... The Colts and Jim Irsay are sitting on this yeah. thing yeah. because yeah. maybe there isn't one anyone out there that they'd, he'd rather have. Last year, there was a lot of speculation. A good friend Jason Cole of Bleach Report was saying that Jim Irsay, regardless of what anybody says, he absolutely was on the phone trying to work something out with Sean Payton, and Payton just wanted too much money and, and stayed with the Saints. And so that also led to Irsay going, okay, you know what, let's stick with what we have here. Right. And it, we could find ourselves in a similar situation. If there isn't that attractive name out there, a number of the, the, uh, the vacancies that we're seeing right now, those teams are interviewing hot defensive coordinators, right. uh, including the defensive <laughs> coordinator of the New England Patriots. Right. And so uh, you can go a number of different ways there. You can get a retread, a coordinator, which the Colts did the last time they had an opening. Uh, or you can get that hot college coach, but some of the big names in college don't look like they're going anywhere either. All right. Uh, a lot of talk about Peyton Manning. Uh, Kimberly chimes in. Uh, both need to be gone and hire Peyton Manning. Uh, I've, I've heard that Mr. Ursay has definitely reached out to Manning. Uh, I don't know that there's been any reciprocation at all. I don't know how open Peyton is. Remember uh, several weeks ago, former Colts vice chair Bill Polian went on record saying that Peyton is definitely ready for that type of role. Mm -hmm. But can you honestly see Peyton? And we had a conversation with Polian last night. Part of the part of the job description of being a GM or president of the National Football League team would be to go to college games all the time, would be to get up at the crack of dawn to be at practices, would be to go out and scout other teams, not to mention go out and scout other players. Right. Right. You see Peyton doing all of that? I, I, you know what? He, he has to have the right staff in place which makes me wonder if that relationship with Bill Polian could lead to a Larry Bird, Donnie Walsh kind of scenario yeah. here with the Indianapolis Colts, yeah. which who knows if that would be a possibility. Um, I know that, and we know the given the type of work that he put in as a quarterback in this league, almost paralysis by analysis. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did so much homework, mm -hmm. did so much preparation mm -hmm. that a role like that where he's asked to, where he's very demanding, asked to watch a lot of tape and do this and that, I'm sure he can do that. Uh, the question is, is whether or not he wants some security. You know, when you're retired, you don't have to worry about extra pressure and all those kinds of things. And if he steps into a role like that, would he also want an ownership stake? So he has something to... I would think so. so yeah. Uh, and, and I wonder if that and I was... Think, and I think Jimmy's in love with Peyton enough that he would probably give up some of the, I think so. That would be a very interesting... Uh, very interesting. Now, it wouldn't be over 50% of the team. Oh, I guarantee no, no, you that. No, no. <laughs> 
but a role for life. Look, if this GM thing doesn't work out, hey, you're still beloved by this franchise and you have an ownership stake. Yeah. Uh, we have some. Kerry May writes in, keep Pagano, get rid of Grigson. Uh, that's something that we've mm -hmm. certainly talked about and, and hemmed and hawed about out of the uh, Colts complex today because we haven't heard from Grigson. No. In fact, Grigson's name wasn't even brought up at the news conference. No, and he did not do his radio show. And did that's right, didn't do his radio right? show, the radio roundtable on uh, 1070 The Fan. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. A little plug for you there. Uh, let's see here. Fire Grigson. Yeah, yeah. Manning for GM. We've heard a lot about. It. How about the guys that showed up at the game yesterday wearing shirts? Manning for oh, GM. I saw, I saw that behind one of the goalposts. How awesome that. was that? <laughs> This thing is catching hold. It's catching Which, you know, fire it's a not. Bit. Six years ago, it was, uh, uh, you know, suck for uh, luck. Suck for luck. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, now yeah. we're Peyton for, for GM. <laughs> Charles David Ellison chimes in. Peyton, Peyton, Peyton. Uh, let's see here. Teresa Fire, both coach and GM. Again, I, I, I just don't know. It's crazy because we sat here 24 hours ago on this couch yeah. and said something's going to happen within 12 hours. Yeah. And, yeah. And nothing has. No. Uh, let's That's go back. Yeah, let's go back. Another quick little tidbit. We're also going to hear from a couple players as they look ahead to 2017. Uh, more from Pagano at 1:30 today. I just, I just look at, yeah. I mean, I just look at things, and it's always half full, you know. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have any reason to believe, you know, why I wouldn't be. That was that was the big gulp. Yeah. <laughs> that first tough question. He had to. Uh, that was the that big, was big gulp. gulp. I'm gonna yeah. do that for my uh, tough questions too. <laughs> big. I thought this was cool. As the guys that clean out their lockers, how about Austin Blythe, the rookie center, getting one last autograph uh, from the all-time sack king? Smart Colts. man. Smart and, man. Uh, number 98, Robert Mathis. There's a. Uh, Andrew uh, looking Andrew, for his car. Andrew Luck, about, yeah. apparently. <laughs> the key fob wasn't working. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Uh, but the guys were all cleaning out their lockers. So that begs the question, uh, what was it like in that team meeting at noon today? Those season-ending meetings, what are they like? They suck. <laughs> they suck. Um, unfortunately, I've never been in a season-ending meeting after a Super Bowl. Um, obviously, that's what every every player, every team is chasing. And um, so, uh, you know, anytime you come in here cleaning out lockers and uh, meeting with coaches, uh, outside of that, it, it sucks. This kind of vibe um, is in most facilities besides the, the ones that win the Super Bowl. So um, I'm going to hold on to this, you know. Let it you let let me use it as motivation next year, so we don't feel like this at the end of next year. Yep, and that of course takes us to the free agents, guys who may or may not be back in 2017, and that includes the guy you just heard from in Darius Butler, the cornerback who has kind of become a safety on the team. I think he actually kind of likes being a safety. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, I think he you does, know? and he's he's played well in that role. He's Eric, played well. Eric Walden, who's one of the few guys that. Uh, Ryan Grigson has picked up in free agency and has panned out in a big mm -hmm. way. Although, given the fact he's double digits now in sacks, he's going to command some pretty high dollars. Does Ryan, uh, if he's going to be the GM moving forward, does he want to pay that kind of cash? Mike Adams, what do you think? Is he back? Pops? Ah, that's that's a tough one. I, I think they really like what they have in TJ Green yeah. and, and uh, Clayton Gathers. And so with the money that Walden will be commanding. Look, they're going to have something else is not going to happen. It's something not going to happen. Yeah. I think you want to keep Walden over over a, uh, a guy, great guy in Mike Adams. Jack Doyle, uh, I think they'll resign him, although you've got the other tight end. Uh, Dwayne is, yeah. Who, I mean, Dwayne's going to be here. Yeah. That, that is a given. The kid, uh, Eric Swope, Eric Swope mm -hmm. yep. is developing. So if Jack, after the season he had, demands a high dollar, he may not be around. Uh, and this would be another thing that would turn off the fan base uh, mm -hmm. because uh, of how well Jack has played, yeah. how reliable Jack is. Eric Swope has potential and he showed some flashes, but it's still raw potential. Uh, Jack Doyle, you know what you're going to get, a yeah. hard-nosed blocker and reliable hands. And that's more than what you can say about the guy who got paid this, you know, and Dwayne right, Allen. right. But if, if, if Jack, I just don't know, if Jack is going to get paid yeah. from another team, it's gonna the be Cathedral tough. guy may not be back in a, in a Colts uni next year. Trent Cole, uh, some question marks there. Yeah, I'd bye -bye. Love, love to see Robert Turbin back. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
he is probably outside of Frank, but one of the more reliable backs. Finally, yesterday at fourth and one, <laughs> they gave it to Herbert. They, to they gave it to him. That's all he does. Where was that two weeks ago? Oh. In the Houston game. <laughs> uh, anyway, back into the Colts locker room as uh, the team starts to look ahead to 2017. I firmly believe the trajectory is going to go back up. Uh, and, and, and that's what we'll work for. That's what we'll shoot for. If I didn't believe it, I wouldn't be here. You know, it's, it's a pretty simple answer. We have a great locker room, so we've never really, um, we've never ever questioned the guys, you know, how they want to win or their commitment to the team. Um, I think it's just, you know, taking those little experiences and, um, you know, continue to learn from them. Seems like personnel-wise in this locker room, everybody wants to be back next year. Yeah. You want to give this thing another go. Right? Absolutely. Because the team. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just the nature of the game, we know it's not going to be that way, but I mean, I think, you know, a lot of guys in here want to come back and write what we did wrong. Uh, back, I'm just reading some more of the uh, comments. Uh, these are great. I, I, here's the thing. Uh, if the Colts go status quo, which okay. as of right now, almost 9 o'clock on Monday, that's the situation. Uh, to me, they've lost the fan base. TV ratings are down locally with yep. this team by yep. about 30%. Imagine that. I mean, you've got a team that that easily owns the sports oh, yeah. uh, stories, and the, and the TV ratings down thirty uh, percent. What happens next year? If they're staying the status quo, yeah, then can you imagine? It's going to be what a if lot they of start the one and three next yeah. year. <laughs> uh, and which which is a possibility. Yeah. Next season, the team is going to be taking on the NFC West, which is tough. You have teams like Seattle, Arizona, which is you know very good. Yep. Uh, they also had to take on the AFC North with Baltimore and Pittsburgh, and you know what happens against the Pittsburgh Steelers. They also have a, uh, a game against the Denver Broncos next season. Yep. Uh, it's not an easy schedule. And not only that, do you remember the days when we used to go, at least they're in the AFC South? Jacksonville pretty much, if, if Myers makes a, a field goal right. or two, right. they, not the last three, but the last four games against the Colts, the Jacksonville Jaguars would have won. All I know is that Blake Bortles wishes he played the Colts every, <laughs> every, single every time. Sunday. Yes, because yes. Tennessee's chomping at the bit for their next opportunity against the Colts after being swept this year. And the Houston yeah. Texans, it doesn't matter where they play, an alley, whatever it may be, or whatever is on the line. Because right. they've come into Indianapolis the last two times with the AFC South on the line, and they've beaten the Colts. So we can't say, well, hey, you know, the division, at least it's easy. No. Mm -mm. On the flip side, if the Colts would have beaten Houston once this year, <laughs> one of those two games, they win the division, they'd be hosting the quarterbackless the right. Raiders right. in the wild card round, and who knows, they might be moving on to the division. <laughs> This is maddening. <laughs> and still, they still this would have this, they still would have a lot of issues with this with this team. No, uh, of still course, have a lot yes. of issues. And so, I think I think I speak for a lot of folks in the fan base and saying that they're glad things didn't necessarily work out that way. You want what's best for the team, but if you have issues, you want them to be glaring issues that actually get addressed. And even though it looks like they have glaring issues, we still play in the waiting game on whether or not it's going to be addressed. Those issues, man. Uh, the season stats were coming out. They gave up the most yards in the history of their Indianapolis right. Colts franchise and what second most second, all time yes yeah, second most this has been a, this is a long storied franchise yeah. and the Colts this season gave up the most yards per game the second most yards per game in franchise history and again as you pointed out the most uh, since, they, and since they moved to Indianapolis so 1981 they gave up a, a, a crap ton of yards uh, but 2016 was the second most they ever gave up and not only that 2015 third most Chuck Pagano's a defensive-minded coach, though, right? <laughs> right. It's tough without Ray Lewis. Keep the co oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen to that. Uh, keep the comments coming. We're going to wrap things up. We've got a lot more coming up tonight on the news at 11. And stay tuned tomorrow. Nothing's going to happen tonight. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but if, does something happen? <laughs> Go ahead and check. <laughs> something might happen nope. tomorrow. I think at the very least, I mean, if we're going to stay status quo, Jim Mercy has got to come out and talk to the fans. Right and let them know what the plan is because there's a lot of folks out there scratching their heads about uh, the future of this team, especially under Chuck uh, and Ryan. Anyway, uh, for Michael Grady, I'm Dave First. Thanks for watching RTV6 Facebook Live. We'll see you tonight on the news at 11.